It may be a good rule, but there are exceptions to all the rules, so I will make an exception to this. For error is not accountable for its acts as truth is. If a scientific man does wrong, he knows it. But if he is wrong from ignorance, there is no right in it, so there is no sin to him. Science tells you that fire will burn your hand, and you cannot put your hand into the fire ignorantly when you know it. So you cannot commit that wrong without suffering punishment, for your punishment is in your knowledge and not in the fire. Now, suppose you are a child and do not know fire. You see it, and as all children do, you want it, or a piece of the red-hot coal. Your ignorant desire for the coal excites you, and you put your hand into the fire. The sensation frightens you, just as much as though you had put your hand into a dog's mouth and been bitten. The sensation produces fright. Then comes reason. You reason about the fire as though it contained life and would hurt you. So the fire and the dog are, to you, just the same. As you stand weeping, someone comes and tries to soothe you by telling you to keep away from the fire or dog and not get hurt, but makes no distinction between them. So the child sees the dog can move around and thinks the fire is the same as the dog. He shuns them both alike, but puts intelligence in the fire. Now the child grows up with all the ignorance of his youth until he becomes a man. Then he takes his place with other men, and knows nothing of science. So it sees a sort of intelligence in everything that it does not know, and reasons how to keep clear of every phenomenon it happens to see. At last, in its ignorance, it prays to this enemy. So it worships all things that it cannot understand or comprehend. It puts God into everything. Therefore, in its ignorance, it gets up a sort of creed or belief to offer up a prayer to this invisible power to which it has given the name of God, and it lives and dies in the fear of it. It worships and pretends to adore it. So when it goes into the water, it prays that the water will not drown it. It sees God in all danger and prays to it to have mercy on it, until it can get clear of the enemy it worships. This is the religious man. Now where stands Jesus as a man, not Christ? Jesus knew that all this was hypocrisy, fear, and ignorance. He made a difference between his God and their God. He knew that their God was a devil, so he said to them, You worship ye know not what, I know what I worship. Again he says, You were the children of the devil. He was a liar and abode not in the truth. The people in their ignorance want leaders, and they will hire them. These leaders know that the people put trust in them, and they know that they are not worthy of taking the high responsibility of leading or instructing them. So their first prayer is correct when they say that they are not worthy to take the Lord's or science's name upon their lips. This is true. For God is true, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So when a person is all the time crying, Lord, or truth, never showing any fruits, beware of such, for they are wolves in sheep's clothing. Jesus told them all this was hypocrisy, and this made them crucify Him. The priests never taught the people anything except for the benefit of their craft. The leaders must have a living, and a pretty good one. This deception could not be kept up, but must go down before the progress of science in the people's minds. All science was confined to the leaders and was of this world. It made them crafty and inventive of all sorts of humbug to keep the people in subjection. 
This kept the people superstitious and led to sorcery and witchcraft. So deception became the order of the day. So much so that they got frightened at their own beliefs and passed laws to keep it down. Just as though the development of science must be under the ignorance of this world. Jesus saw all this, and as the people were groaning under the yokes or beliefs that bound them down, he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest to your soul by explaining to you the cause of your trouble. When he commenced explaining to the people, the explanation was to save them from the misery of this world of belief and to introduce a science or kingdom where there would be no offering up of prayer or forgiving of sins, but a consciousness or science that would put them in possession of a knowledge of themselves, which the natural man knew nothing of. When Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you, he means my wisdom or science. That is easy, for it contains no restrictions. This to the people was something new, so they reasoned together like people who want to get some information. This setting the people to reasoning was a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Greeks, for they had no idea that the people could govern themselves. So he took up the laws of Moses and gave them common ideas of them. Then he showed them a more perfect law of love that bound them together by sympathy, not of this world, but of science. The people had never known that a good act must proceed from a goodness that they felt. The priests had never taught such a thing, so goodness was a sort of low wisdom and only applied to the poor. To try to be good without having any reward in view was of no use and the person who put any religion into it was as ignorant as the swine or dogs. Now here was where Jesus struck at the root of error. He says, Every plant or science that is not planted by wisdom shall be rooted up, and goes on to tell the people what his kingdom of heaven was. It was peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, or truth. He explained to them by illustrating the difference in the motives that govern the people. Therefore he said, Except ye become as little children, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God, or science. Now everyone knows that a little child has no idea of what man calls right or wrong, but might is right. So, to become as a child, means that you must not be under any restriction that prevents you from doing just as you please. 